two, three, four. Very good, that's good. Hi everyone, John here, and uh, welcome along to another lesson. This is Jim, I think you remember Jim from our last video we did. And um, Jim Jim and I get together um, and, and have a little jam. And Jim's really good because um, he was. we were having a little jam the other day and he was playing some double stop uh, stuff as he was doing there. And I thought, oh, that's, that would be really good for uh, a video. So uh, we thought we'd do a lesson on that. So that was great what you, you were doing there. Uh, Jim, what were you what were you thinking when when you were doing that? Because you were moving around a lot, and it didn't kind of seem like the pentatonic scale that you know that we're all used to. Uh, you know, I'm not thinking I'm not thinking the pentatonic scale there. Mm. Um, I suppose I'm thinking about. I should say, sorry, I forgot to say that the the chords we're in A here, we're in the twelve bar blues in A, and I'm just doing this this rhythm this. <laughs> kind of really like a Johnny Boo good rhythm and Jim's playing over so I'll do that again for Jim so so if I play okay, that Jim that yeah I'll, I'll do that hang on I'll turn down a little bit so we can hear you eh? so three four <laughs> that's great so okay, so now mm. John's on John's on the A chord so the A chord the top two strings of the A chord are these two so that's all I'm doing is just playing the top two strings of that, that chord. And then when we go to the D. Let me go to the D. I'll go to the D. We're going to go to the D. So to get to join those, to join the, the A to the D, I'm, I'm cueing it in so. Um, over the A7 to take you to the D. So there's your D chord. So you can muck around there all day as long as you've got that shape. And then it comes back to the A. But instead of just doing that all the time, I went. Yeah, that's really nice. A really well-known um, riff, but it's it's one I fall back on a lot when I'm kind of getting a maybe um, getting a little bit lost about what's going, what's, what's coming up next. And then then we go to the E. So instead of you can do the same thing you did on the D there, which is and then back to the A. So, so all I've done is. It's done the same thing I did in the beginning. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's great. That really fills out the sound, doesn't it? Because you know when you when you play, you know normal, 
yeah. the pentatonic thing it kind of uh, when you've got used to that those double stop ideas and then you leave that behind it sounds a bit empty somehow doesn't yeah, it yeah, yeah the double stops yeah certainly fill it up. so we went round three times there didn't we so the the first time should we do that again i'll play that again that was the first time round you first did round. and then you did something different each time didn't yeah, you uh, there else. um yeah so so i'll play that first time around so i'll keep it going see if it yeah. brings something to mind um two three four <laughs> I'll keep going. Okay. Yeah. So that time we did much the same thing as that we did the Chuck Berry. Which is really, really handy, and just change the change the, the, the beat of it. So one, two, three, four. Okay, stop there. John. Okay. So when we go to the A, when we go to the D. Mm -hmm. We're actually playing. That would be your D seven. So we're just playing those top, playing those top two strings. So we're going. That's how I remember it, how I think of it. So if I was in G, we went to the C, we go. And if you're in G, so if you're in A, for the D, back to the A. Now when, I went, when it went to the E, this time, instead of going up there, went down here to this E. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds great. That's not one that you'd immediately kind of think of, is no, it? That that shape really, there. Really handy so that shape is it is uh, what's so that shape, Jim? That's your that's your um it's your uh, your E chord. Mm -hmm. It's gone out. It's gone out. Your E chord, and um, so I'm just playing, playing the E chord as that. Oh yeah, that sounds great. So if you think of that as your E chord cage system, and then if I wanted to do that, say in, um, uh, okay, say in G. So your same shape, but up here into the up to your G chord up here of that same shape. So how do you know, Jim, when you're playing this shape here and you're doing this one? How do you know that? What? How do you go by that? How do you know that's an E for you? How do you visualise oh, okay, that? Okay, that's that's. Um, that's using the cage system, which is another another thing. You really need to know that, I think, anyway, because that we we all know our open D chord. Now, if you shift that up, you got D sharp. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. And if you get keep keep going in D sharp, E uh, sorry F F sharp G. Yeah, that's so great. Can you come all the way up here? And you've got C. Just using that same shape. Yeah, so that's important because you know the notes, don't you? So it's important to you know know where they are to, to move things up and down. Really. Yeah, you need to know your chromatic scale. You need to know that. You need to know that that's E, that's F, F sharp, G, and know them on mm. on all the all the strings so that whenever you shift, you know that that's an F. That must be a G. That's an A. That must be a C. 
That's a D. That must be an E. Mm, that's great to know that, isn't it? The G is a little bit, a little bit more um, cumbersome, but the concept is still the same. So if that's a G, you shift it up to there. Yeah, that's that a tricky one. But we wouldn't play it like that. It just means we can get, we can, we all those riffs in open G. We can do it in A because we can. Mm, cool. Using that same, we're using those notes between that A shape and this A shape here. Mm. Okay, so on that second part of that blues, um, you were. So is that something you do a lot? You know, play those, get ideas from other players, oh, and, and yeah. yeah, yeah, and practice them. You know, mm. uh, don't just um, don't just learn them, and then and then move on to something else. Um, practice them and put a rhythm track down or a backing track and get them embedded in, into your psyche. And then as soon as you can, when you're playing with your mates or your whatever you're playing at some club somewhere, put them in there and then keep doing it, keep doing it. You can drive everybody crazy. But yeah. <laughs> gradually it becomes second nature to you and that's that's your little bag of tricks that you call on. Your bag of tricks gets bigger as you go along. Yeah, I like what you said earlier about that Chuck Berry riff group because you did, you you were playing that lick, but you weren't playing it the same. You changed the rhythm, yeah, haven't you? And yeah. and um, uh, do that again, uh, Jim. Do you remember One, what you two, did? Three, four. Yeah, that sounded great. Yeah, I could hear that influence, but it didn't. It didn't sound exactly like Chuck Berry, did it? You know, it sounded, uh, it sounded you know, a bit really different because you changed. That yeah, that mm. sounds really it's good. It's probably been overdone so much, but it's really handy because it sounds like rock and roll. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Mm. it sounds great. And and on the third time when we were playing, shall I play again? And, and you did something up the neck there with some chord type ideas, mm. didn't you? There. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So hang on. There. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was great. I like those chord ideas. They sound re really good because sometimes you hear that, don't you? You hear people doing lead lines and then yeah. they go into chords, and you know you kind of think to yourself, what what's he doing there? How does he know so many chords? How do you know so many chords, Jim? Yeah, they're interesting. <laughs> yeah, they're really cool. Six, um, yeah, oh, there's six, are they? Okay. I guess how would you explain those, John? Um, I think that's what they've got. Um, they've got a, a root third and the sixth note from yeah, the major okay. scale haven't they i think so in in we're in a right so it would be a uh, an f sharp yeah that one there is your f sharp uh there sorry if you can see me on my camera there so you've got a f sharp and c so you're playing uh, those ones. So if i'm playing an a there how do you know so many ways to play that uh, chord, you know, because if I'm if I'm doing this, to Jim. Yeah, that's great. So you're playing because that one, okay, I know. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. familiar so with it. And then there. you move, yeah, one there. Right. Uh, now you've got another one here. But ah, so okay. There's your, there's your A note there. Ah, okay, right. There's your A note, A note there. Mm -hmm. But you're playing a different shape. Ah, okay. So same notes, same different notes. different shape. Yeah. Okay. So you've okay. got that shape there, which is your if you if you want to look at it as your D D minor shape. Oh yeah. Okay. Just moved up like you were doing before to the to the fifth fret. Yeah. Okay. That's the interesting thing about that chord, if you want. In this context, it works fine as a rock and rolly thing. But it's an actual fact could be used as a um, F sharp minor, mm. which I suppose is the relative minor of of, of a. a anyway, isn't it? And we kind of play 
uh, you know, pentatonic scales on yeah. relative minor, don't we? Okay, yeah, so all mm. this, so when you, when you're doing that, sorry, I'll turn up a bit. That's that shape, okay. Then you did that, right? Let me do it. Yeah, one there. One there. And where, where's the other one, Steve? Then we've got one up here, which is... Ah, cool. Ah, uh, okay. Which is the same as playing your A chord. Ah, yeah, that's right. yes, that's right, yeah, because everything's repeating on the 12th fret. Yeah, 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 yeah you just come yeah. in, yeah. Okay, so now that's handy to know. So these same shapes, right? Same or different shapes, same notes. Yeah. 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 And but you were you were when I was doing that, you were moving those though. I saw. Okay, so when when I go to the D chord, are you thinking of are you thinking of the the A's? Are you thinking of the D's there? Do you think of the, do you play? Are you still playing the same shape? Ah, you play. Okay. I'm playing the D, I'm playing ah, you're playing the and then you're playing D sixes, are you? Yeah, I'm playing. Yeah, the I see. Here, I chord. see. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, where's the other D up here? Oh, there's the other D. Right. So now I need to play that shape again. Ah, uh, yeah. Which I was playing over that A chord, E shape, and I'm playing that shape there. So now I've gone to the D, so I'm D chord, E shape, and I'm playing that one in that shape. And then if I wanted to, I could come up to this D chord up here. But now I'm going to play that shape. Okay, yeah. So it's an idea, idea to play around with them and just find out where they are because we're just using the top three strings. There are others and when you're coming coming back down the strings you've got other ones. Idea is play around with the ones on the top strings first. So you can think of it as your D minor shape. But in this context we're using that shape we're using it here over the A chord. Nice. Okay. Does that make that clear? Does yeah. So when you're moving those shapes there, you're keeping in mind kind of where these, where those A notes are. So if you're here's your, if you're an A, and then when you go to the D chord, you're thinking of ah, oh, there's the yeah. D note. Is that right? Yeah. So I can play. I can and play. then when you go to the E, there's your E there, right yeah. on the twelfth fret. So yeah. D D A. Okay. That's right. Okay. So I'm thinking um, over the A chord. I'm thinking that that shape and I can also play this shape mm -hmm. over the, over the, all over the A chord in which case then the A is here right yeah, on the, the the A notes here yeah and then I can think the other A the other um, A shape just move this camera a bit that was it Sorry. and it's really in the articulation or the timing and the phrasing of what you do with that particular chord at the time. You can mm. play one, two, three, four, you go. Or you can go. That's great. Well, that's really good. And it really sounds cool, doesn't it? Like you're doing a, a lot and, uh, you know, when you watch someone doing that, you think, gosh, what are they doing up, mm. up here? You know, because yeah. especially for years, you know, I knew that. 
I knew the pentatonic scale, but you know, I'd see people like you doing that kind of stuff, and I used to think, wow, what, what are they doing, and how do they know so many chords up and down the neck? So it's a combination of kind of knowing where your notes are, and you know, learning from other players, would you say? Yeah. So how did you learn that? Well, it, it, it's really, um, it, you know, it, the sad thing is there's no shortcuts. Um, if you want to get better, you just got to keep searching and um, and and playing and practicing and, and finding out what it is that interests you and inspires you, and and learning that stuff and breaking through the barriers because there are times when you you just don't want to do it anymore. You're sick and tired of it, and and you're not seem to be getting anywhere. But if you keep going, you will. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Thanks, Jim. That that was really good. Well, shall we do? Shall we? Uh, we'll play you out. We will do one more, and you 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 do that. I'll go around three times, and here we go. So see if you can get some ideas. Thanks for watching this, and we'll see you in the next video. So two, three, four. <laughs>